as a medical system, we've lost our level one trauma centers in the military. Luckily, on most Air Force bases, there are not a lot of seriously injured patients. They're just not seeing the multiple gunshot wounds, the multiple stabbings. People that are in the military, whether they're full-time or they're reservists, probably don't do a lot of trauma in their daily practice. Our Air Force Medical Service members don't have the opportunity to truly practice their clinical skills. You're not going to see traumatic injuries that you would be exposed to downrange. That's not so good to go and get dropped into Iraq or Afghanistan or wherever we're going to be next and have to learn on the job. So if Air Force personnel and Air National Guard personnel are going to develop and maintain their expertise for that rapid response, they really have to be where the injured patients are. The Sea Stars program is one of four platforms in the United States Air Force that allows medics to come from all over the world, train in a civilian high volume trauma center, and allows them to keep their skills current. It's important to be at a level one trauma center because you're gonna be in the middle of level one trauma when you're downrange. We are one of the only sites that is partnered with multiple large inner city hospitals. So we have partnerships, a long-standing partnership with St. Louis University. We have a burgeoning partnership with Washington University in St. Louis. The relationship uh, between the Air Force providers that are here as Sea Stars cadre or as rotators with the, our civilian counterparts, I think is excellent. It's a well-integrated relationship. The CSARS team is part of the shock trauma team. We have a permanent cadre of physicians, nurses, nurse anesthetists, technicians that are embedded in the shock trauma center, so they're part of our everyday fabric. The CSARS cadre members are truly team members in the civilian institution. They participate fully in whatever unit they are assigned to. They are fully licensed, qualified members of the team and looked upon as such. Then we have rotators that come in and out every so often so that we help those men and women in the Air Force learn the skills that they need to be immediately deployed to the field. So it's our job as cadre to be like the liaison for the student rotators with the civilian counterparts. And so we've been embedded to work on the floor or doing clinical shifts even when we don't have students, just to build that relationship so they can trust us. They love having Sea Stars here. They know who we are. They call us in anytime that there's something interesting or any type of exceptional opportunity. They love having uh, a Sea Stars member in the room with them. The Sea Star sites are definitely force multipliers when it comes to readiness. There's no other platform available right now to the Air Force Medical Service for some of these services outside of the Sea Stars platform. Platforms. Currently, the platforms are run out of St. Louis, Baltimore, Cincinnati, and our newest one is in Omaha. We basically started off as a trauma platform for readiness and deployment, and it kind of turned into medical training that we don't get at our everyday facilities. It started as a purely clinical training shop for surgeons and has morphed remarkably. Sea Star St. Louis is open to about 12 different AFSCs, which an AFSC is our different duty codes for across the medical service. Providers, uh, nurse practitioners, physicians, physician assistants, uh, they can have backgrounds in anything from general surgery, trauma surgery, anesthesia. For nurses, we can get flight nurses, critical care nurses, ER nurses, and core nurses. And then our medics. Our Baltimore location also has paramedics and IDMTs. And then we also have respiratory therapists that come through the program. When a member shows up for Sea Stars, they are here for two weeks, and it is we call it a clinical immersion, and it truly is that. Uh, they are working pretty much uh, for the entire two weeks. It's almost a crawl, walk, run. We go over a little bit of PowerPoint, not too much, but we get some foundational education. They get some basic lectures on TBI patients, traumatic brain injury, and the burn patients, which is predominantly what you might come across when you're downrange deployed. And then they also do hands-on with the equipment. It is different equipment than stateside. This is specific equipment that we use in the deployed setting. So it's nice for the students to be able to get their hands on. If they are going to deploy, they'll already have a basic knowledge of each piece of equipment. They have a day at the anatomy lab where they will work with tissue to perform some of the technical skills. So they can do chest tubes in patients and they can do like needle decompressions, which is all life saving techniques which they need to know but you cannot always do on a live individual. And then we get to go out and be on the floors, do some practice. Some of the most common types of injuries we would see at a level one trauma center would be penetrating injuries. Here in St. Louis we are above the national average for penetrating injuries. Gunshot wounds, 
blunt trauma, penetrating trauma such as knife injuries, occasional explosions from factory type incidents. Other areas that uh, are of focus for us are traumatic brain injuries, so motor vehicle collisions, falls. Those are directly translatable into some of the blast injuries that we see downrange. At St. Louis University Medical Center we take care of a lot of patients that are seriously injured and it is an opportunity for people to develop and to hone and to improve their skills. Trauma volume uh, is unpredictable. Uh, some months we have a lot of blunt penetrating trauma. Other months are uh, much lower case volume. So we do simulations kind of to cover all bases because we can't guarantee that they'll see every trauma that we want them to see or get experience to while they're here. So by utilizing our simulations, we can guarantee that the students will get some of the higher risk types of traumas and, and know how to run through a primary survey and take care of those patients by incorporating the simulations. All right, we'll get there. We're very fortunate to here to have a number of high fidelity, very realistic simulators that are tetherless that we're able to control remotely from iPad or computers. We have high tech equipment here, and so there's very few things that aren't mimicked exactly as they would be with a real patient. They can participate in terms of airway. They're able to kind of speak to me answer questions. We gotta cut up your closer so you can see what's going on with your body, okay? From a breathing perspective, I can both see visual chest rise and listen to breath sounds. From a circulation, I can check pulses on the mannequin. They have pupils that can change size. They can be awake or unawake. We're able to really duplicate significant injuries, trauma patterns, those high acuity, low volume scenarios that people are looking for. Um, so we do burn simulations and damage control resuscitation. So a lot of it is tailored towards the injury patterns that they may see or incur when they're downrange. What I've seen in the simulations for Sea Stars has been that they're certainly tailoring those scenarios to things that we anticipate to see downrange and also tailoring a lot of those scenarios to everyone involved on the team. We try and make sure that the students are going in the right direction, not going down the rabbit hole the wrong way. We want it to be the best learning experiences that they can have. And if we see there's something going wrong, we can call a timeout and educate at that time. Make your mistakes now. That's one of the bigger teaching points usually in the simulation, that we do this now so that hopefully in the future you can work out some of those things to really optimize your future patients for a better outcome. So after the students are done with their simulations, we have them go back into our debriefing room, and then we talk to them, see how they think things went, and then we'll kind of give our ideas on how the simulation went and give some tips and tricks. And then we'll have the students finish up with a debrief telling us what they've learned from this experience and what they hope to get through the rest of the experiences. So we're getting a, a wide array of exposure. So between our sims and our hands-on, I really feel like they build us up and build our confidence to be able to walk into these sims and do really well or walk in and take care of our patients really well. So we're able to bring people through, put them in an intensive environment, and they're getting those skill sets that we're not able to provide them anywhere else. And it's really, really rewarding to see them from day one to day 12 when they leave Sea Stars to see the improvement, to see the confidence grow with each one of the different students. I would highly recommend this program to anyone, any type of provider, whether you are a nurse, a tech, a, a physician, a scrub tech, or even a surgeon, this is a chance for you to be able to build upon your skills what you know, enhance your confidence so that you are a strong and ready provider when you step out into the deployment setting. So this allows us to have all those people tool up and hit the ground really ready to go. We've lost all of our level one trauma centers in the Air Force. If we don't have these partnerships, we don't have the opportunity to take care of these patients. So in my mind, the Sea Stars platforms are not replaceable. For us as an institution to partner with the military, we really believe that this is part of our commitment to our country, to partner with our men and women who are on the front lines taking care of us. So if we can take care of them in this small way, we are all in and delighted to do so. I think everyone understands the importance of the knowledge we're passing on, the importance of the mission, and the end goal, which is to save our wounded warriors and soldiers' lives downrange.